Hey, what's up guys? Pablo Munoz here and welcome to another video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how the new pack of brushes that I just released work, what to expect from it, and kind of like a workflow on how you can combine them all together and, you know, create really cool stuff with it. I'm really, really excited to finally share this new resource with you. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. All right, so this is a tribute pack, meaning that it is inspired by two of my favorite artists. H.R. Geiger and Sislo Benksinski. I'm sure you're familiar with, with their work. So the, the brushes and the effect of the brushes are inspired on their body of work. So they try to, in a way, emulate certain patterns and um, the general look and feel of that really cool dystopian surrealism from Benksinski and, you know, the, the more biomechanical nature of the work from H.R. Geiger. All right, so this tutorial will be divided in three parts. There are going to be some uh, timestamps as well. So the first part is kind of like an installation and, you know, what comes with the pack and how to, you know, put it all together and, and get it get it to work. The second one will be a, a rough overview of what the brushes do. And the third one, I might jump into a time lapse. Uh, I just want to show you, like, the, the application of the brushes and how you can combine them in a in a real scenario, basically, in, in a project. So let's go ahead and start by installing the brushes or, or set, setting everything up. All right, so when you first download this pack, it comes as a compressed or zip file. So obviously the first thing that you need to do is uncompress and extract those files uh, anywhere, like in your desktop or any other folder that you want. Once you do that, this is what you will see, right? So I just uh, uncompress that zip file into my desktop and it comes with a folder called bonus, uh, the brushes, of course, a video tutorial, which you will find exactly this video that you're watching here online. You can also have it in there um, um, locally and this uh, quick start guide. So this quick start guide is just a quick reference. Let me just open that one up. And it basically shows in kind of like in a written form some of the stuff that I'm going to be covering in this video as well. So I just divided the, the brushes in some, you know, different type of categories, like which ones are directional brushes, which ones are for patterns and that sort of thing. So I'm going to cover some of that in this video, but you also have it there in a PDF form with some nice images as well. Um, again, the video tutorial will be in this folder. The bonus material, we'll get to that in a second, and the brushes. So I'm going to open up the brushes here. So all of all of these ones are the brushes that come with the pack. Uh, you can literally just double-click one of these brushes, and it will load in zeros, which is what I have here, obviously, at the back. So just to give you an idea, if I click on this brush, uh, just double-click on it, because I already have zeros open, it immediately opens up. So I can start playing around with this brush uh, straight away. So in case you're kind of new to ZBrush, there's no real um, installation that you have to do with the brushes. You can just double click them and it would work straight away. Now, the most important thing that I should mention is that these brushes were created with the, um, the latest version of the of ZBrush at, this, at the time of this recording, which is the 2021.6.6 meaning that if you have um, an older version of ZBrush, these brushes won't work. So you need to update to the latest version of ZBrush, which is, uh, again, here at the top, you can see 2021.6.6. That is the latest version of ZBrush. If you don't have the latest version of ZBrush, what, what's going to happen is that when you load the brush, it's just going to come up as the standard brush because it doesn't have all the settings. So make sure that you have the latest brush, the latest uh, version of ZBrush in order to load these brushes or any more recent version um, that comes after this one, right? All right, so uh, very very quickly, the bonus, uh, you can see there is matcaps. So there's going to be a bunch of matcaps, which I already have loaded here on the left-hand side. Uh, same deal, you can just double-click them, and it will load automatically. And some noise make maker presets that I'm also going to walk you through. So uh, there are about 35 different patterns um, with tileable alphas, which are pretty cool. So I'm going to go through that as well. But the main thing that I want to show you is probably, let me put that out of the way. Uh, yep. So the main thing that I want to show you is that if you if I press the light box, um, I have already selected the folder. You can see all of the brushes with all the icons in here. So it's a lot easier to just load them up. So I have loaded this one already, which is this one right here. But I can, you know, just double click on, let's say, this one right here, and it would open up like that. And you can just go back to light box and keep doing that every time that I need to load a new brush, right? So there are about 45, or not about, <laughs> there are exactly 45 brushes. Uh, but when I say about, it's because the some of the curved brushes, they have additional tubes and additional uh, things in there. So they make up for more than 45 brushes. Uh, but again, we'll get to that. So if you want this to happen like this, if you want to be able to access your brushes from the Lightbox, what you have to do is go to the installation folder in ZBrush. So in my case, uh, it's in my PC. 
local uh, local disk program files, Pixel Logic, Zbrush 2021.6, right? So find this um, this path in your machine, and what you have to do is go to the Zbrushes, double click on that, and uh, basically here create your own folder and you can uh, put them in there. So I myself have a bunch of different brushes, so I call um, this brush or this folder my brushes, meaning that if I go into my brushes, um, I have a bunch of my custom brushes, so I have other packs that are also available online, like the digital clay pack, the fiber mesh for um, grooming, um, you know, the rocks, the skin brushes. So all I did was create a new folder, so the HRZB uh, folder, as and this stands for the HR Geiger and Sitzlopinski file. So I just created this folder, and in here I just basically copy and pasted all of those brushes that came from this folder right here. That's it. That's all you have to do, it, and it's only if you want to be able to access them from the Lightbox. If you don't care about, um, you know, seeing the the icons and anything like that, uh, you don't have to worry about it. You can just get into the folder and double click that if that's easier for you. All right. So that is all in terms of the installation. And now that we have that out of the way, we can go ahead and start with the with the fun stuff, which is basically showing you how some of these brushes work. So for the second part of this tutorial, which is the you know the demo of the brushes, um, I'm actually let me just change the material. Uh, the most important thing that I want to mention is that, of course, these brushes are great to add details, and you can even use them to explore uh, primary shapes, but the most important thing is to have something solid as a base that rather than just having a, a sphere, for example, and then just adding the, the pattern because you won't have that the nice definition of the volume. So it is very important to have a solid base. So in other words, the primitives, uh, the primitive blocking or the primary shapes, it should be a solid piece before you move into uh, adding details. Or if you want to use these brushes to explore shapes, uh, you can totally do so as well. So I'm going to show you that um, in a second. So this character or creature type of thing that I have in here on screen, um, this one has been detailed with the brushes. All of the you know weird patterns and membranes and all of these details that you can see on the legs and uh, mainly on the chest area and the hands, that's all being done with the brushes. But I just wanted to quickly show you the kind of like the before and after so that you can see what I had before in terms of the blockout and what the brushes did for this uh, creature. So I'm just going to take a, maybe let's get closer here. And I'm going to take a screenshot, Shift S, and I'm going to switch to the original one before it was detailed. So again, this is just to show you that it's important to have a solid base before you move into detailing, like in any other type of uh, sculpture that you're working on. So in this case, I had like some, you know, already established some of the secondary shapes and these folds and weird sort of like skin wrinkles. Um, so I had a solid base uh, in terms of what I wanted to achieve. Uh, so the, the brushes just helped me to um, to explore, you know, other patterns and, you know, increase the, the level of details and the surface noise. So that's the idea um, behind this first concept. Let me just clear that up and go back to this one with the details. Uh, so another important thing, and this is more uh, a general advice in terms of design, um, you'll see that not everything has the same level of details or the same type and quality of details. There are like some areas that are pretty plain, like the head, uh, the belly, you know, some areas here around the, um, around the legs and at the back as well. So that's just a, a good way to try to maintain that, that nice balance between the areas of rest and, you know, areas that have like concentration of high frequency details. So the, and the only reason I mentioned this is because with these brushes, it's really fun to just add a bunch of details. And it's really, really easy. I'll show you um, in a second. So uh, you might get a little bit, you know, it, you might go, go overboard with the details just because it is very easy. Uh, so just keep that in mind that it's good to have like a nice balance between, you know, the, the areas of details and the areas of uh, what's called the areas of rest so that you, um, you allow your eyes to rest in a way. But that's it, right? So that's what I wanted to show you uh, before we actually move on. So let me bring in a sphere that I'm going to turn into a polymesh 3D. And this is kind of like the what I'm going to use for the second part of the tutorial. And the third one, I have this block out of, you know, it's a very sketchy uh, xenomorph type of alien thing, which I think is, you know, it goes well with the pack anyway. Um, so... Yeah, first I'm going to just show you a couple of things here, and then we go into detailing like an actual project. 
So I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this a few times. So I have 2 million polygons in here. You can see the active points. And I'm going to start by clicking on the light box. And I'm going to use um, probably my favorite one, which is this membrane, right? <laughs> one of my favorite ones. Uh, these two actually are my, uh, some of my favorite ones. And you might notice that some of them are slightly similar. And this is what I wanted to uh, go over. So there are different type of brushes. One of them, um, well, some of them are kind of like generic. All of that is in the in the quick start guide. So for instance, this standard sharp and the standard strong, the color pinch and the cutter, right? These four brushes are, you know, things that you can use in any project, really. They're not very specific in terms of the of the effect that they produce. And I use this one quite a bit in terms of setting up the secondary forms as well and, and sharpening details. But you, most of the brushes that you'll find are either patterns or membranes to create that really cool, um, creepy look from the, you know, from the from the pack, which is inspired by Geiger and uh, Benksinski. So I'm gonna double click on this one, so it loads that one up, increase my brush size, and if I click and drag, immediately what you get is a nice sort of continuation of, um, you know, what could be like a spine or something. So you can do this type of things. And like I said, it's very, very easy to, to do them. And you see, it just starts to connect. Um, it creates like this really quick, uh, really cool membrane connecting all these pieces. And this is what I like about um, this specific brush, you know, but you can explore obviously a bunch of different um, effects with this one by var variating, for example, the, the intensity or, you know, if you change the intensity or you change the, um, the size of the brush and press like harder or not, you can just create additional details just by changing obviously the, the brush size and, and that creates a nice transition between you know this larger area and more details in here all right so let me just undo that um because i want to show you a couple of things so i'm going to do one one stroke in here like that and then i'm going to do another one on this side maybe around here right so if you do two strokes like this um that are have like similar depth or similar intensity and similar um, size, let's say, or length, uh, you might notice that there is a repetitive pattern. Like it's hard to to spot it. And I did my best to try to make them as, um, you know, hidden as possible, the, the tileable alpha that this is using. But you might spot like uh, very similar stuff if you do them a very, very, you know, very in a very similar way. So in other words, if I just do one like this and another one very similar to that, you might find that repetition, although, you know, in this case is not very easy to spot. So what I would recommend is if you want to do like a, like a wall of this type of weird shapes is to go back and forth, but use different intensities and use different um, directions. So for example, you can do this and then instead of going in the same way, I'm going to press a slightly different. So less pressure and go the other way around and then do this like so and maybe finish at around there and do another one here and you know that's gonna create that nice variation and make it look like you know it is that you spend all this time creating this this pattern rather than um seeing the the kind of like the repetitive pattern that it's part of the of the brush so that's just in terms of the workflow now there's a couple of things that um make these brushes look really really nice not only the material and that's the reason i included those matcaps but we're gonna get to that in a second uh, but also the smoothing brushes or how you polish the effect. With most of these brushes and most of these membranes, what I like to do is select the smooth peaks. So this one is a brush that comes with ZBrush. So as soon as I click on that, I'm going to get this pop-up saying that the, the normal uh, smoothing brush is going to be replaced. I'm just going to skip that until next time. So if I hold the Shift key, now what I have is the smooth brush is the smooth peaks. And that basically respects some of the peaks. So if I just go, actually, let's reduce the intensity of that brush let's just go like this it helps you to polish and and refine those details but it keeps a lot of the kind of like the peaks <laughs> that's the the name of the brush it keeps all the peaks and the high points of this effect which is awesome so this one is going to be a lot more obvious with other brushes all right so i'm going to take another one um this one is pretty cool let's go to lightbox and i'm going to use something like these bumps so these bumps is going to give you, um, actually, before I do that, let me 
Let me just do something else. Um, I'm going to use this the clay brush. Um, so imagine that you have something like this with a variation of volumes. And this is another important thing about these brushes that some of the behavior that you will find in some of the brushes are dependent on um, kind of like the secondary forms or the volumes that you already have in your sculpture. Meaning that if you have like a, a very clean surface, like most of the sphere, you'll you'll have a um, you know you have a pretty simple effect like these ones that I that I added right here. But if you already have some nice volumes and kind of like intersection, this is what I'm trying to do here with the with the clay brush, just adding variation of the volume. So imagine that I don't know these are kind of like muscles or um, you know something that is part of the <laughs> of the of the sculpt. So in that case, if I bring something like these bumps, this is a brush that has uh, some specific settings in terms of depth. So it would respect the high points and the low points at some at some level. So if I go ahead and do this, you you don't see much difference, right? So I'm gonna press slightly, like a bit softer here, and this is gonna cut through certain areas, but it's gonna try to maintain certain levels of um of depth so this one is a brush that creates this really weird um hopefully you can see it here so this area right here is not as as strong uh, but it's part of the same brush so this is a brush that i would use to generate these weird sort of patterns um and i can go with the same stroke over the same area and you see how it sort of uh, smooths out those bumps not all of them and and that's using the same stroke Right, so you can do these like this, like basically do one stroke, then the next one, then the next one, and you can maintain, um, you know, the the original effect of this brush, which is this very strong kind of like bumpy, creepy <laughs> effect. Or you can just click and drag, and then without letting go of the click, you can go back over the same area, and this brush should um, should allow you to sort of like clean the same bumps a little bit and create a a bit more of a, um, I don't know, it's not necessarily a smoother surface, but something that is not as strong, and that is using just the same, um, the same brush, just variating the pressure in the same stroke. So this is a, an interesting brush and something that I would use quite a bit to, let's say, add uh, this type of creepy effect within the crevices, and you can combine it really nicely with other brushes as well. Like I said, this respects some of the um, the intensity. So it's not gonna um, it's not gonna change some of the details that you already have. So I can just go ahead and do this and go through this. You know, if I wanna sort of like destroy or <laughs> you break apart this effect a little bit more, and then with the same stroke without letting go of the click, I can start um kind of like smoothing that effect or the bumps. And you see this one is start to become a little bit noisy, and I'm losing uh you know the the effect that I had before. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the shift key and smooth all of that. And as you can see, you still have like those really nice uh, bumpy, you know, these dots in the in the surface, and that's all thanks to the smooth um, smooth peaks. So a couple of very interesting brushes. Now I'm not gonna go through all of them, obviously, because that will be quite a bit, uh, quite a long tutorial. But I just want to show you the the main difference. So I've been showing you kind of like the directional brush. So these brainy stuff and the bumps, they work very similar. Um, the membranes as well. So uh, and I call them directional just because you can like this one as well, like this strong um, membrane builder. Uh, I just call them that directional because you can just give them direction, right? So you can do this type of stuff, right? You can do this, and it basically gives you um, directionality. So you can use these brushes to um, establish the general flow of the details on your sculpture, you know, and create this type of thing. So that's why they are called directional, or some of them are called directional. Because yeah, you can build these type of things um, just by adding direction. So even though there's a bunch of holes in here and and details, there's a sense of there's a flow, right? There's a sense of direction um, with these brushes. So most of the the brushes they have um, similar patterns. Like I said, they're inspired by the same body of work of these two artists that I mentioned. Um, but let's say. Um, I'm gonna use these bumps directional, right? And you'll notice something very similar between this and this one. So there we go, right? The difference between these brushes 
um, is not only that it is an inverted effect. So if I press the Alt key, which inverts the effect of all the brushes, right, you would get a very similar effect to this one that you see here. So the reason I, I save them into different brushes is not, um, you know, it's not just to add more brushes to the to the pack, but there are actually certain um, subtle settings that are different between the two. So what I'm trying to say is that you can load any brush like this one, right, and create this effect. And you can also hold the Alt key to invert the effect and you immediately have a completely different brush, right? The reason this one is different, so the the bombs directional is different from the membrane strong, is because there are like certain settings that um, that make this look behave or or create effect an effect that is different from this one. So I would mainly use this membrane strong to create a, kind of like a pattern wall like this, right? And the main difference you will see it when you have a, a bunch of already pre-established um, details. So you'll see this one creates kind of like um it's sort of like smoothing things as I as I go over the same area, whereas this other one, right, not only gives you the bumps, but hang on. Yep, sorry. So the the previous one that I was using is the same. <laughs> um let's double click on that one. So this one not only gives you the the inverter effect, but it's a lot stronger, and it kind of like respects some of this um, the details that you already have. So I can go over this membrane and enhance certain details, and you see it kind of like mix, uh, mixes and, and blends with the previous one, which is pretty cool. All right, so you might find certain brushes that are similar. Again, it's just trying to um, you know give you alternatives, but with every every brush like the ones that I already showed you, like this membrane, right? Uh, you can also hold the Alt key and invert the effect, right? So this one right here is a little bit too strong. You see those bumps that are generated at quite high. So you can variate the either the intensity or the uh, or the pressure that you apply to. There is a similar brush to this, and I'm just jumping between all of the brushes I know, uh, but it's just to give you an, a quick overview, and then I can just give you a bit of the the workflow. So uh, there is this cutter with directional or with directional bumps which is essentially the same brush, inverted obviously, but um, it has a bit of a pinching effect and it has a strong cutter. So you'll see it is slightly different from this stroke. Um, it's not as strong. And the, um, the line in the middle serves as a kind of like a damp standard brush. So you can think about this cutter as a damp standard brush with bumps in a way. So I would use this brush to go through certain areas like this and sort of like, cut through the model at the same time as I add these bumps. And of course, I can then go with a smooth brush or the smooth peaks brush and refine it. And then you start getting this kind of like really, <laughs> really creepy bony um, intersections and uh, connections there, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, so let me just go back in time a bit. Okay, so um, something like this, membrane two, and there is another one, membrane uh, limit wall. These two again are very similar. Uh, they're using the same the same alpha, but the settings are different. So this one is just a cool brush to quickly go ahead and generate a pattern like this. So this one is actually uh, pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but uh, it generates a nice pattern. And again, it might not look like like much, but if you use it in combination with the smooth peaks again, this is something that I I spend quite a bit of time making sure that. Um, the, the different values that the alpha is using kind of like work really well with the um, with the smooth peaks. So you know when you when you use the smooth peaks, it's not gonna smooth everything out. It's just gonna maintain uh, you know a good level of detail from the original uh, stroke and then just smooth out the area. So or the the peaks <laughs> like the like the brush says. So this one is really cool to generate this type of um, you know membranes and I use this quite a bit to uh, to add kind of like uh, wrinkles or falls that also have this um, this pattern underneath. Now this other one, keep going to the wrong uh, place. This one, the membrane wall or limit wall, um, like the name says, it sort of like limit the effect. So if I go over this area right here, you'll see that this brush is basically adding details in the in the deep 
and areas of the of this um of this effect so i would use this one to go over the other effect so you can use that in combination and just to add further details in between the you know the more visible falls or um, i don't know again it's like a membrane so it's just weird connections um, this one is a really cool one that you can use when you have something like this let me exaggerate i'm going to use this, this standard brush actually so when you have um, kind of like holes or deep areas like this that you want to fill with some additional effects uh, you can go and use this membrane this membrane limit wall and if you go over this area you see it not it's not going to add the same level of the same strength in all the areas it's just going to be a lot stronger in those deep ends or in those areas that are like really deep into the into the surface so you can go ahead and do this to or use this brush to to detail um you know secondary shapes that you already have uh, and you want to just go in in kind of like in this area and add details within it that's going to be a, a really good way to um you know to enhance the or add a, a visual interest really to to, the, to that to that area so this is what i was saying at the beginning that if you already have like a nice set of uh, secondary forms and, and volumes going in and kind of like exploring how this can be interconnected with this sort of membrane it's really really easy and then at the same time as you start detailing that area you might discover for example this this area right here these volumes that could serve as well as a as part of the secondary shapes so in this case i would use something else so i would go to my miscellaneous ones or um, the general workflows like the sharp or let's use the, the standard strong i would go ahead and take advantage of those um, patterns that were generated by the brush and just try to work on those and enhance them so I'm gonna do something like this and I'm just gonna connect them with that kind of like weird wall or weird, weird pattern that we did before right and of course we can smooth all of that um, I'm, obviously this is nothing but my, my point here is that you can basically take advantage of the suggestion of the, the effect and the pattern that was generated by other brushes and continue the refinement process right or or the or the sculpting and and this is how you can use these brushes as uh discovery brushes to to figure out how all of these uh work together or you know just um finding really interesting ways to make transitions between your volumes and between the the secondary shapes of your mesh uh, so again this is just to say that these brushes are not just to detail you can also use them to explore primary shapes and and find really cool stuff um hidden within the effect of the brushes all right so let's just go ahead and move on with some other stuff uh this membrane control uh, this one is really cool you can create these um kind of like veins and this one works really well again with the um smooth smooth peaks so for instance if i go ahead and do this and start connecting them remember these ones are also directional so it's not like the the usual uh you know alphas or alpha base brushes that you will find um you know online uh, these ones are actually sculpting brushes in a way so you add details at the same time that you sculpt so you can create this really really interesting pattern right um with you know with certain directionality right and you can connect you know in between those um, veins that sort of thing and of course then you can go with the smooth peaks and simplified and pattern so it just creates this um you know some some of these effects are like are kind of like hard to uh, to describe but it I, I would imagine this is kind of like a, a set of very thin bones um under like a very very thin uh veil of linen or something like that and it just creates this weird connection so this one is great to um to detail like subtle forms like like let's say that the the head of this character that um hopefully we'll get to do it in just a second um i would just do something like that to add further detail but maintain everything um roughly you know the same level of, of polish around the surface uh, whereas if i use something else like um you know something like this one uh, the effect is quite strong and it's quite evident right so that's what i was trying to say that 
this kind of like membrane uh, could be used in a much more subtle way, but at the same time, leave a nice suggestion of, of a pattern in there. Uh, so let's go back here. Um, because something else that you can do with this, let's load another brush. Most of the brushes, to be honest, is just very fun to just open them up and, and try them yourself. But uh, I just want to give you, like I said, uh, an overview. So this other one, it's another, um, these wrapped bones, it's another directional brush that creates this sort of like bony connected pattern. So I like to use this one to enhance, for example, this membrane, right? So like I said, it's kind of like bones underneath like a, like a thin veil um, connecting with each other. <laughs> Again, it's really hard to, to sort of um, describe the, the actual effect that these brushes create, but hopefully you get the idea. And if you're a fan of uh, Geiger and especially Bixinski with this, uh, with this specific brush, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so you see, this is another brush. If I do it in a separate area, you can have total control over the direction of this. And it's just kind of like a tiling bone um, that gets created. And obviously, depending on how much you press, depending on the size of your brush, you can be very, very, um, you know, very precise about how you combine this. So you will hide in a way that that tileable nature of the alpha. So. This is the same stroke. This is the same uh, single stroke. I just variated my my pressure in the tablet, and that way I generate this um, you know rather different pattern in here, right? And that's all the same brush. So that's um that's a really cool thing. And like I said, with any brush you can hold the Alt key and just invert the effect. So you can use this as a um you know like a broken <laughs> damp standard brush in, in a way. So it creates this this pattern. There's a little bit of pinching as well. Um, so it creates that pattern but inverted. So lots of fun to have with these brushes. Now, for instance, let's say that you like this pattern and you want to sharpen it a little bit. So you can use something like the, let's use the, the cutter, the HR Geiger cutter. I'm going to use a small brush. This one is super strong. So you can think about it as either a, a damp standard brush on steroids <laughs> or maybe like a slash brush, but it has a lot of pinching. So this one allows you to refine and, and sharpen certain things like this. So I'm going to do only half of it just to show you the difference between this and another brush. So I would use this, for example, to, um, you know, to add things like this, like sort of pinching certain areas, not, not like a, a full on stroke like that, but just little things like this. And that creates the effect of like, I don't know, like uh, tension points and, and pinching in certain areas. And then you can use the smooth brush to refine that. Uh, but, you know, it's it's just a, a matter of combining and, and figuring out, which I think that's the cool part about this, is to figure out how you can combine the different effects to create your own um, pattern and, and your own style, I suppose. And that's what, I, what I'm excited about. Like, they, they work really well together, all of these brushes, um, to create, you know, your own custom patterns. So... Um, let's say that you like this one as well, but you don't want to, you know, override some of the details as much with this brush. Uh, you can actually use some of the brushes that come with ZBrush. So let's go ahead and actually click on the brush thumbnail. So there is this um, contrast delta and contrast target. So these brushes allow you to enhance the, the details, kind of like sharpen those details. So I'm going to use this contrast delta uh, with a larger brush and just press harder here. And as you can see, it just like enhances the the effect. Like this area compared to the other one is not as strong, right? So you can do that, and you can also use maybe like the inflate brush if you want to sort of tighten those those bones and make them look like really, you know, like they're sort of like pushing each other. Uh, so you can still use the this the standard brush or the brushes that come with ZBrush in combination with this uh, to work a little bit more <laughs> on the on the effect and, and refine it. All right, so a couple more brushes just to wrap up. Um, these membrane and pattern brushes, these are brushes that I would use when I have like the secondary forms in place and I'm just adding details between, let's say, crevices. So for instance, let's go with uh, pattern six. If you use this brush in a, in a plain area or something that doesn't have a lot of variation, this is going to give you um, you know, this cool, weird pattern. And that's basically what it is. So some of the brushes that 
um, have that name or that had the, the the word pattern in them are essentially to do that just to create patterns and then you can just go with the smooth picks and these are the brushes that are the best to to use with the smooth picks because it creates this weird membrane uh, patterns um, like this but if you know if you use something else I'm just gonna use another pattern brush like pattern four again in a in a plain surface you get a pretty pretty evident effect but this is a, a cool brush that you can use let's say when you have things like this when you have already um, areas that have like quite a bit of a difference between the high and the low points or the the crevices and the and the high points so you can use this brush to add further detail and to add a pattern in there and this brush will respect certain certain areas as well so um, this pattern, I, I suppose, is something that I would use to add additional wrinkles, maybe. But again, you can use it in so many different ways. And like I said, you can also hold the Alt key and invert the effect and just add you know, further details like that. So there's a lot of fun to have with these brushes and the patterns that are generated with them. All right, so um, a couple of more really cool and interesting brushes before we jump into the last part of the tutorial. Um, that I wanted to show you. So uh, membrane, we covered that one. Um, some of these patterns as well. This pattern strong. This one is one of my favorite ones, and I'll show you why. This pattern strong is is really good, but if you, you if you use this pattern in a in a flat surface like this, uh, it's not gonna be as interesting, right? I mean, it does create a, a weird sort of stuff, and then you can just go over the same area, uh, like one of the brushes that I showed you at the beginning, and sort of like smooth things out. But the real value of this is when you have a bunch of, uh, let me just do that, um, a bunch of holes <laughs> or, a, or some variation again in the, in the secondary shape. So hopefully we'd get to show you that in the, in the actual demo, in just a second. Um, so if you have something like this, imagine that, I don't know, this is part of the, of the head of a creature or, or something. And you go ahead and use these pattern strong. Uh, this one is really good to go ahead and inside those areas, just add additional detail. So it would respect the the edges a little bit more. So it's it's just a great a great way to add complexity. Again, very quickly once you have the, the as like I said a strong base, a strong secondary form, and then you can just go you know with a standard brush and. Keep refining these uh, these details. Maybe figure out how this uh, transition this these volumes into the next one. Um, you know, at, at this point you can use the the standard brushes that come in ZBrush. But it's just that um, this discovery method with these brushes is uh, a very very exciting part of it because you are you're kind of like not in control necessarily of what the effect is. But once you finish, you're in control of where you put it, obviously. But once you finish with adding those details, then you can uh, fine tune and keep refining stuff and um, defining other areas. So, for example, here I can just go back and use the cutter that I used before, and you know, enhance this um, kind of like the relationship between this, this the hole in this area and this one right here, or go with my standard brush and you know very small sizes and start adding a bit more of a could be veins or something like that and obviously smooth everything to maintain like a clean surface as well so this whole process becomes um you know very organic and is really fun to to discover the patterns it's just a matter of figuring out you know how you can combine the brushes but it, that is something that honestly is just better to to open the map uh see what they do let's say let's open this one up go ahead and do this it's like okay this would be cool if i Maybe use them here and and hold the smooth brush uh, just to add some further, you know, surface noise to this area, right? Uh, so I can use this brush to maybe um, bring this this area or this surface that is very different from the rest to sort of like share a bit of that, you know, the same sort of like interest as the other areas, right? So I would encourage you to. Just play around with those. This is kind of like a general overview of the brushes, just to show you how cool um, some of them are and the and the 
effect that they do. So very briefly, let's go through the matcaps that come as a bonus. And the reason I wanted to include that is because um, I think they're they're matcaps that enhance the, the look and feel of these brushes and they make it look like really cool. So for example, if I go into this iridescence one, uh, it might not look like much as in, you know, it's, it might not be great, <laughs> but if you go ahead and render this one out, this material has some settings that actually work only at render time. So if I click on BPR render, you see that it just gives you a much better effect. Um, it's kind of like a copper, kind of like gold inside the crevices, which is pretty cool. But when you're working, um, it looks like this. <laughs> so um, if you want to see the full effect of this material and some of the other matcaps, make sure that you render and then you end, you get the, the full effect. Um, the reason they work only at render time with the final effect is just because there are some settings that um, you know are based, let's say, in ambient occlusion or in the shadow, um, that sort of thing. So you see this area that is more in the shadows or in the shaded area, it's, um, it's a bit more high contrast and it has more saturation, right? Uh, let me just show you some of the other ones. This is kind of like a nice silver, again, with some, some nice crevices. Um, like golden crevices, very quickly through all of them. This one is something that I would use, especially for this area, because uh, it just enhances the the highs and lows. But with um, you know, you, you could use it as a as a bone with blood. <laughs> I don't know. So there's a bunch of these ones that uh, really enhance the look and feel. Um, this one is the only one that is not as as strong as the other ones, but it has a, a nice backlighting effect. It has this copper one, uh, this silver one. Um, yeah, I'm going to go through, through all of them really quickly just to show you what they do. Uh, my favorite ones, just so you know, are this green one, uh, this green as well. So these two green, the green uh, copper and the green metal. Those are my favorites. But another cool thing about these materials or matcaps is that, for instance, if you select the silver one, this material is basically using a an image. That's why it's called a matcap, a mat material capture based on an image. So the highlights and the, the general lighting is baked in that image. And I tweaked it in a way that you can change the color and you will res you maintain some of the, the highlights as well to be, let's say, that white color. So this one, um, this silver one, for example, allows you to change the color quite a bit like that, uh, but it still maintain that, that really nice quality of the of the silver material so you can just you know maybe something really dark like this uh, imagine something like that for alien type of thing so let's do a bpr um, so you can get like really cool additional effects not just by selecting the material by changing the color as well uh, that's the same thing for this gold rose um, it maintains the the main values of the material but then you can mix it up with other colors and you know generate something really cool which is you know that's the idea of that um of these bonus bonuses and just to to wrap up the second part before we move into the um what i would say is just the, the final time lapse and show you a bit of the uh, the workflow the other bonuses are surface noises so if you go to the in the tool palette if you go to the surface noise right um you can obviously click on noise and this is the, the pop-up palette that allows you to play around with the noise and add you know further details to your mesh. However, in this surface noise, you also have these light box of noise makers. So that's what's included as well as part of the bonus of this pack. So if you click on the light box noise maker, um, I already have it in here. This, um, to be able to see this, it is basically the same thing as what I show you with the brushes. You just need to put the noise maker in the noise maker section of the ZBrush installation file. So I'm gonna double click on my noise. So all of these ones come with this pack. And as you can see there, they have very similar patterns so for instance, if I take um, this one, double click on that, and let me just get closer here, and you can just go ahead and click on edit, and it brings the window, and you'll see it is based on this tileable alpha as well. So you can just go ahead and change the size of that alpha. Um, this one is mixing with the basic noise, so you can reduce that to nothing. Uh, you can change the color if you wanted to, and you can tweak like that sort of, um, this profile curve, which combines the the actual alpha with the with the mesh itself, so you can create all sorts of weird stuff just with the same, you know, with the same alpha, right? So the main color right here, the the highs, the high points are this color. The other the other color comes from whatever you have selected in here, so you can change that as well, right? 
So this is a um, you know a cool way to add additional effects. You can limit this to a specific area. So let me just bring in something else. I'm gonna click on Lightbox Noise Maker. Go in here as well. Um, let's go ahead and load this pattern. Right. So this is another pattern. Maybe we can reduce the size a bit. That alpha. And what you can do is hold the control key to access the masking brushes. I'm just going to mask this area, invert the mask, and that basically limits whatever you have in this pattern to this area. So I can just say, okay, I only want to have this pattern in this specific area. And if you have enough resolution, I can go ahead and apply to mesh. In this case, I don't know if I have enough resolution, but it's all right. I'm going to clear the mask. Right? So now, this noise maker, maker pattern is only applied in this area because that's what I masked. Um, and I forgot to change the, the basic noise. That's what the rest is kind of like adding a bunch of uh, tiny details. But this area is, um, is giving me this additional detail that I can, again, go ahead and, and refine because now the, this is part of the sculpture. Right? So um, a bunch of like really fun ways to, to play around with not only the brushes and the effect of the brushes, but also with the, with the bonus materials. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the final part of this uh, long overview slash tutorial so that you can actually see the power of these brushes um, in action. So what I've done here, I created this, uh, this quick base for the, for the Xenomorph. Um, it's just a DynaMesh object that I, that I started pull, pulling and pushing to create this shape. And obviously it's not you know, as long as the actual Xenomorph alien is just kind of like my own version of it. Um, but it has some primary shapes already in there, so we can go ahead and, and start playing around with that. So I'm going to go ahead and start by, uh, let's go ahead and go to the brushes. Um, and first of all, I'm going to show you, before I jump into the time lapse and actually use those brushes, I'm going to show you some of the ones that I didn't show you before, which are these um, HR Geiger tubes. Uh, so for example, if I select this one, when you click on that, it has a bunch of options, right? It has This one has eight or seven. Uh, yeah, eight, and there's another one that has seven, so you have additional brushes within that brush selected. Now, if you were to have something with subdivision levels, like I have in this creature right here, right? This one has six levels of subdivision, and I click on it, you won't be able to add anything. So you're just gonna say, hey, you need, let me just do that. At the top, it just says, this mesh is composed of multiple subdivision levels, so you can not add these ones, right? So um, if you wanted to add something to, to a mesh that has already subdivision levels, you know, what you can do. In this case, I don't have subdivision levels, but imagine that I had. Um, I can just go ahead and I click on a pen, click on a cube, select that cube, and I'm going to make it a Q cube, which is uh, for you should be under the initialize tab. I just can click on this Q cube, go into solo mode, and that's what it gives me. I'm going to go in transparent so that you can see what it is. I can go ahead and scale that with the gizmo and just place it somewhere that is hidden within the, the mesh or you know, it could be somewhere outside as well, but I just prefer to keep it within the mesh, so somewhere that you don't see it. And that way you have two subtools, and this one is a subtool that wouldn't have any subdivision. It's just a simple cube, and you can take any of these brushes, you can, you know, use symmetry. And for example, this tube could be a, an interesting one to add in here. So I can just do this, and it will add that. Obviously, this is too big, so you can just change the brush size and click again on the, on the brush and update it. So I kind of like that, maybe a bit smaller, right? So I would use these brushes to sort of like establish, um, you know, further the secondary or primary shapes. So let's say that I'm happy with this brush and how it is placed. I can just go ahead and click somewhere else and that locks that in. And these brushes as well, uh, or these, these meshes from these brushes, they, um, they work well if you were to subdivide them. So if I enable dynamic subdivision from the geometry palette, click on dynamic, you see it gets a, a smoother version of it, um, maybe a bit more. And that way you can sort of like maintain um, everything kind of like separate from the original mesh, right? Because these brushes are being applied into this cube. Um, that's, that's basically how I would use these brushes. Uh, let's go ahead and go into move brush, right? So let's take that move brush and let's turn off dynamic for the time being. And with the symmetry, I'm going to start pushing this thing inwards. Just give it a bit more shape. So this is the, you know, there's nothing nothing complicated about this right now. This is just uh, the usual 
move brush and the usual uh, workflow of adjusting shapes. Uh, but that's something that I would do at this stage before I go into further details. But I'm going to leave that sort of tweaking that is kind of like boring to watch uh, for the time lapse. Just wanted to show you what are what are the tools that I might use in that time lapse and and how you can see you know how I apply these brushes. So in the same in the same tube on the same sub tool, I can go ahead and select another one. So let's go ahead and use something a bit more, something simpler. Um, let's go for this one right here. Very small brush. And let's do connection there. Right? Maybe a smaller brush than that. Cool. So I just did that, um, the simple curve. If you want, you can extend that. And again, this is nothing to do with the brush. This is a, an actual feature of ZBrush. You can hover over this endpoint and you see it creates that red line to connect it. You can click on that and continue there. So I'm going to do this just a tiny bit more. And yeah, I think that's it. Maybe connect this here at the back. Click somewhere else and go through the same process again. So uh, when, you in, when you add an insert brush or a curve brush, ZBrush automatically masks the, the rest. So that's really good to just add, let's say, in terms of the workflow, just add um, a curve brush and then go through the process of adjusting it before you move forward with the with something else all right so i'm going to clear that and again if you enable dynamic this is still is going to have like a, a nice um, subdivision already in there so as you can see i mean these ones are pretty pretty straightforward these um these brushes let me just bring in another one this one is a, a bit more complex but again you have seven of those uh, and when i say more complex you know, it has like shapes that create a more complex effect. For example, this one, um, if I do this, it just creates this this weird, <laughs> I don't know, mechanical shape. But once you add it into a, into a curve brush, obviously it becomes a, a lot more organic uh, straight away. So, you know, you can use this as, um, as a way to encompass, encompass the, other, the other brushes. Um, but yeah, so this one is just like, like I said, better to go ahead and, and explore it. Uh, these tubes, they have a bit more of a, <laughs> again, it's try to, I'm trying to describe this, but it just has like this additional pipe to it. So you can add additional bits and pieces within those holes if you wanted to. So it's a, it's a bunch of, um, uh, of effects that you can include. I would suggest not to go mad in terms of adding, you know, all of them in the single, in a single creature for example just try to limit yourself to three or four and that's just you know to maintain a, a cohesive language or a visual language uh, because you know all of them have like slightly different styles i would say so one one of them uh, some of them are more rounded some of them have like a more harsher uh, edges uh, this one is pretty similar to this one that i put so i could just use them uh, in combination but you know just try to be uh you know, conscious about that they're actually different. So if you put them all together, they might not have that that nice cohesive style that I'm that I'm referring to. Uh, but yeah, so those those are the the methods, or that's the method that I I would use these these curve brushes. Uh, additionally, to those two, uh, there are these these two brushes. They are like super simple. It only uh, comes with one. So I'm gonna double click on that. So this is another uh, curve brush, but it only has this mesh and it's super simple. You know, but this is a type of things that I would use or the, the type of brush that I would use to add uh, tiny details as well, like connecting this one in here and then another one there. Like this type of stuff. Um, you know, like I said, they're very simple. Um, you can also smooth this brush or smooth the, the curve by clicking and then holding shift to smooth it out. Uh, but again, all of these brushes are just to, to add details. just want to mention that they are in there. Um, but obviously the fun ones, <laughs> at least for me, are the, the sculpting brushes. So I'm going to go back to this, to the head. Uh, let's actually enable dynamic here. So that we have an, a nice representation of what this would look like if we were to uh, to smooth it. And I'm going to go to this brush, uh, sorry, to this uh, sub tool. And I'm going to start detailing it with some of the brushes. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the time lapse and I will see you after that.
All right, there you have it. So this is the final sketch of this alien head. Um, again, there's a lot of things that need to be tweaked. And if I were to spend more time on this thing, I would probably, you know, go ahead and, and refine the transition between some of the details. But as a, as a showcase of the different brushes and some of the effect of the brushes, I think it works really well. And as you can see, it speeds up the process of detailing quite a bit, as well as, you know, finding new new elements in the design, like all of these kind of like tendons and stuff like that in here were just created using the brushes or at least suggested with some of the with the with the brushes all right so um just to wrap it up i'm gonna go ahead and assign a different material something more suitable for this creature and just change the color a bit and there you go all right that's it for this overview hopefully you have found this tutorial useful so i'm going to leave this video here and i'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with using these brushes i'll see you in the next video cheers